بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هل قال رب شرحني صدري وسلي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I want to begin my remarks today by thanking Dr. Mohsen Ansari, the Amir of ICNA, the organizers, the staff, the volunteers, and everyone else that put in time and effort into putting this beautiful conference together. For today's, for my brief comments today, I've been asked to speak about gender issues. And I thought it would be productive perhaps to spend a few moments today during that time talking more specifically about the recent changes and challenges that we're dealing with the transgender movement. In April 2015, Olympic gold medal winning decathlete Bruce Jenner publicly declared his formal reconstitution as a transgender woman during an interview with Diane Sawyer. Having suffered years of gender dysphoria, Jenner had learned to repress his inhibitions but now felt the suppression disingenuous. Rather than persist in this masculine impersonation, Jenner announced that moving forward, he would go by the name Caitlin be addressed by the feminine pronoun she, and dress the part as well. As a popular figure, and public, as a public figure, Jenner's announced gender modification quickly became the subject of intense public debate. Should gender dysphoria be accommodated or treated? Is gender a socially constructed set of roles that only arbitrarily aligns with biological sex? or are gender and sex one and the same? And how should society seek to create space for transgender persons if it should do so at all? The impact of Jenner's public pronouncement cannot be understated. Dubbed as the turning point for the transgender community, Jenner's interview with Sawyer was watched by an estimated 17 million people, making it the most watched 2020 interview in over 15 years, the most watched interview on any network for a non-sports Friday night in over a decade, and the ninth most watched interview in television history. Since time immemorial, societies and civilizations far and wide have understood that the world was divided into men and women, and that being a man or woman wasn't something we chose, but rather a function of our creation. It reflected how we were made physically, oh, like and our various capacities. But it also re is reflected in how we behave, how we think, how we interact. Men and women are simply different. And that difference is a beautiful thing because each has certain capacities, strengths and weaknesses, and when we come together, we complement one another. In the Sharia of Islam, this difference is affirmed, at times even accentuated and celebrated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى And the male is not like the female. In recent years, this ancient wisdom and basic assumption of human life has been challenged by the emergence of the transgender movement. It argues, among other things, that gender is something that we choose and self-create. But it goes further than that. It says that assuming someone is male or female based on how Allah made them is oppressive and unjust. It accuses people of holding on to the gender binary, quote unquote, as bigots and backwards. Suffice it to say that these assumptions about the human per person, about our gender differences and more, run diametrically opposed to Islam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu, attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa'a, wa attaqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham. 
إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا That Allah says, O mankind, fear your Lord. Have taqwa of Allah. Be conscious of Him who created you from one soul and created from it its mate. And dispersed from both of them many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you ask one another and the wombs. Indeed, Allah is ever over you an observer and watchful. In this verse and literally dozens of others, Allah reminds us of our creation, that He made us men and women, and from us proliferated mankind throughout the earth. And over all of us, Allah is ever watchful. This creation of men and women is something that Allah describes as being from His magnificent signs in this world. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And of his signs is that he created from you or for, for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them. And he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. The Prophet ﷺ one time was asked about a question related to tahara, purification by Umm Salama because she had heard the Prophet ﷺ answering questions for the men tied to this. And she said, does the same thing apply to men? To which the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا النِّسَاءُ شَقَائِقُ rijal." That indeed women are counterparts of men. Women are counterparts of men, that we complement one another. We're in this world, we share duties and responsibilities. We are slaves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we achieve nobility by obeying His command. And yet our differences are things to maintain and uphold. The Prophet sallallahu in a hadith explicitly condemned imitating the opposite gender. لَعَنَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ الْمُخَنَّثِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالْمُتَرَجِّلَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاء That the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he cursed the effeminate man, the man who intentionally, intentionally imitates women and the women who intentionally imitate men. And the scholars, this, this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, it falls under the chapter of dress. So it applies really specifically uh, to that, but also to some other situations as well, in the sense that men shouldn't dress like women, and women shouldn't dress like men. But rather, we have our differences. We have our differences. And so we can see in these verses how Allah speaks of us, and how His Messenger والسلام, reinforces that guidance and clarifies for us how our differences manifest and the duties we each share and hold. There is a huge intellectual and metaphysical challenge at play, therefore, when we begin to think about the transgender movement. But this issue is not only one that introduces ideological challenges at the conceptual level. It asserts itself in our institutions and public spaces. And that assertiveness has increased in aggressiveness in recent years. Libraries throughout the country now host drag queen story hours. Meanwhile, schools are overhauling their curriculums to begin teaching children about gender according to transgender theory. You can be whatever gender you want. And by the way, if you want to change your gender, we'll help you do so while keeping it a secret from your parents. One of the things that is being used now as a pedagogical tool a tool to help instruct young children about gender is what they call the gender-bred person. And it's a diagram that creates a distinction between one's identity, how they express gender, what their sex is, and their sexual orientation. It, teaches each, it treats each of these as if they are free-floating variables, compartmentalized such that one can choose for him or herself whatever they want. And these things have real-world impacts. Just last month, just last month, in fact, it went into effect May 1st in this state, in the state of Maryland, and I live in Maryland, Montgomery County, which is not that far from here, a stone's throw away, radically overhauled its curriculum in public schools to incorporate LGBT books with no opt-out clause. Of the changes include books that teach children that they can be whatever gender they want. One such book called, entitled Born Ready tells of a girl named Penelope that knows she's a boy and eventually becomes one, quote unquote. This book is geared towards children in kindergarten. California, New Jersey, 
Colorado, Oregon, Illinois, and Nevada have all passed LGBT curriculums at the state level. At the state level. Others are quickly following suit. These curriculums do not only promote a specific idea of gender that contradicts our religion, they induce and promote gender confusion in young children who are not ready yet to be absorbing such ideas. Sports are now being refactored to divine men and women not by sex but gender identity. Female sports achievements are being undone now almost daily by men who have transitioned female. For us as Muslims, it is imperative that we familiar, familiarize ourselves with this movement, that we understand its assumptions, that we understand that there are in fact people who might be suffering from gender dysphoria, and that such people, when they're experiencing that, deserve our compassion and care to help them come to a place where they can grow and appreciate and find comfort in the bodies they're in, how Allah made them. Along the way, we must also speak out. The time for silence is over. We need to track our public schools and speak out when they become ideological spaces bent on indoctrinating our children. We need to make sure that we know the shows they are watching and the values that our children are inculcating and receiving through the media and through other avenues that are targeting them. We have to invest in spaces that reinforce our values. This means investing and expanding Islamic schools, supporting homeschooling and the production of quality homeschooling materials, the production of novels and literature, media, and more, cultural artifacts that our children can grow up and be exposed to and interact with, that can exercise their imagination in a wholesome and healthy way. And in so doing, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from our efforts, that He forgives us for our shortcomings, that He guides us and keeps us and our children steadfast, and that He keeps all of us on that path until our last days. We ask Allah to forgive us and guide us and to help us in this life. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wassalamun al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And Allah knows best.